Good afternoon, evening, everybody, and welcome to ADRP Monday Live. It's about 6.30, and as we discussed, we have Kelly Betts on the other side of this screen. So without any carry-on, crazy introduction or anything other than welcome Miss Kelly Betts, Australia's latest Nitro debutante. G'day, Kel. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you going? Have you come down from the heavens yet? I I am living in a top fuel heaven at the moment. <laughs> that is for sure. Still flying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight. I know that you know, things would be fairly hectic in your world at the moment, perhaps not travelling at the ridiculous speeds you were travelling at Saturday and Sunday, but I'm sure things are still pretty crazy up there in Queensland at the moment. Yeah, we're plenty busy enough. There's obviously still got things happening leading into the Winter Nationals. So, yeah, it all it's all happening. <laughs> awesome. All right. Now, we want to get out of you, of course, the awesome, amazing step you took on the weekend. But for those who are tuning in who perhaps have been living under a rock and haven't seen what you've done in the last... Uh, 15, 20, 15 years. Um, you started as a junior dragster driver at the grand old age of 10. Yep. Back in 95. Uh, Australia's first official, Andrew at the time, national champion in junior dragsters in 98, the very first championship recognised. You yep. then decided that you'd had enough of juniors when you got a bit older and thought you'd just play streetcars for four or five years. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, sort of but not really by choice, by just until I had the budget to be able to get a race car sorted for myself in the adult ranks. Um, yeah, we naturally had a play at the street meetings in the street cars and <laughs> went out and did some bracket racing in, our, in the VS Commodore <laughs> running 15s. <laughs> so Sweet. that's still a lot of fun. I still, I still will go to a street meeting every now and then now and um, put what's now my Ford Territory down the strip. <laughs> and sometimes me and my boyfriend, Blaze, we have a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> the ones a drag race are always a drag race, no matter what's available. Just It doesn't really matter what speed you're going. If you're racing, you're having fun. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun doing it at that end of the scale, and it's a lot of fun doing it at the other end of the scale. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had a couple of stepping stones to get to the other end of the scale. Um, obviously, your modified dragster is a reasonably quick car, and then you yep. stepped into the, the jet racing that's a newt, which everyone's just in awe of when they see it race. It's a crazy little thing. <laughs> it's a crazy little thing, and I still will be driving that car at the end of this year, with, or later in the year, I should say, in August at the Brisbane Jamboree. Okay. Um, so that car's been, it's been a great, you know, stepping stone. It's, I mean, it still will be. I still am going to thoroughly enjoy driving that thing. Uh, it's It's got an element of craziness that, you know, like is off tap. So <laughs> it's a fun little bit of gear to drive. So, yeah, we'll be back, back in that later on. In well, it's year. incredibly short. I don't know what the wheelbase is, but, I mean, you run how many, sorry? 92-inch wheelbase. 92-inch wheelbase, and it's a 7.0, 200-mile-an-hour car? Quickest it's gone is 7.0001 at 195-mile-an-hour. <laughs> so we're still chasing a six-second pass out of it. In well, we're <laughs> in well under a 100-inch wheelbase vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's good. It's a fun bit of gear. I love it. So you've gone from how many gears are in the ute? Four or five? Five-speed Lenko. Okay, so you've gone from five gears and less than 100 inches to no gears and 300 inches. Yeah, <laughs> just a should little bit got, of a difference. Should have got a lot easier, Cal. It should go in a straight yeah. line. You haven't got anything to do. I'm sure once I catch up to the pace of the top fuel car in my head, it will be sort of straightforward. But, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot to think about, obviously, in the fuel car. It's, it's not necessarily about all the different things you've got to do 
on the run itself, but it's a matter of being able to hang on to it and making the right choices on the run to get the car down there and do it safely. And, and yeah, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> all right so, so we've all heard uh, you guys have done a great job rob sharp and the guys of of telling us how kelly's got to saturday morning tell us about from saturday morning and sunday afternoon what was i mean i spoke to you um early very early i think it was saturday morning and wished you luck and you hadn't had any sleep at that stage so how, how did the how did the day progress after that it's a little bit hard to sleep when you're knowing that you're waking up to go and drive a top fuel drag to the next day. So, uh, yeah, I hung into it that sleep wasn't going to be my best friend. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know, three or four hours sleep, I guess, I got, which was better than nothing. But um, I just, you know, woke up in the morning and was just flying in my head. You just, you can't, like, you run the routine of the car and you just run your thought pattern as you you're just trying to prepare yourself mentally to to do it all like just to deal with that initial hit of how fast these cars are like you know you can you go through the routine of what you actually need to do to drive the car and get it through the burnout and, and back and then you know into the the launch process and everything but nothing can compare prepare you for that takeoff it's um blows your mind <laughs> and then the next bit, which is when the that you know after three thirty foot, I guess like between three thirty and half track, when that clutch locks up, it's like taken off all over again. It just was, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Unbelievable. That's really interesting because I was going to say to you, I mean, you've driven some fast cars to the sixty foot, and the thing that I think Aaron mentioned, and most people seem to mention when they go to a fuel car, is yeah, it, it hits you like a Mack truck but then it hits you again. It doesn't stop accelerating. I, I've got to say from from my opinion, the the second hit of that clutch lockup was more surprising than the actual initial takeoff. Like, you know, like, yeah, we've driven some fast cars and the, the drags are 60 foot, like a 160 foot, so it hits hard as it leaves and you sort of, I guess you, in general, have a bit of an idea of what the initial hit feels like. Um, obviously, the top fuel are doing 0.860 footers is at, at another level with that, but uh, nothing can describe that feeling of when the car just takes off again. Like, it's you, – you can't – and even a couple of the people I spoke to, you know, before I drove it, they said, you said that you know even Phil has said it's, it's unexplainable that feeling of when when it does that. So and when I felt it, I was just like, "Holy moly, <laughs> this is what they were talking about." <laughs> that's what they were. That's what they were trying to get me ready that's for. What I was and I can understand why it's hard to explain. <laughs> okay, um, one of the things Richie, your uh, who warmed the seat up for you a little, explained was that the lack of vision in that first 60 feet or first 150 feet. Did you experience that? I quite honestly can say that I I felt like I could see just fine. I sort of, I did know where I was on the track. Um, the first pass, like I obviously did, I needed to do the 330 foot launch and I felt as though I could, I was pretty happy with seeing that, you know, like as in on the pass, I felt I knew where the 330 foot marker was. So um, yep. it definitely blurs your vision. There's no doubt about that. I mean, it's not like seeing everything beautifully clearly. Um, but, yeah, like as you as you do take off, you, you're a bit, you know, blurred. But I felt like I still did know exactly where I was on the track. And then, you know, as you then take off a bit further after 330 foot and then hit that, next takeoff that's when you start to get the the tunnel vision happening and i guess i really felt that on the second pass i did when i did the full half track pass and and then there's the pass after that again i went sort of that little bit past half track again and um yeah i started to really see how that tunnel vision would come into effect and that's you know that it's only going to get even more when i can go further you know okay so you it really does. Sorry. Oh, uh, just as you're going down, like it's sort of everything just comes in, like you know, your vision just sort of 
gets smaller and smaller and you just, yeah, you just sort of got to keep your eye on the groove. Okay. So you went Saturday, you had a, a 3.30 plan. I mean, your initial first hit and shut off. Then yep. you did two more six, 660s or half tracks on, on Saturday. So you must have been tucked into bed Saturday night thinking, I got this. This is this has been pretty cool. Yeah, I, you know, with, without sounding silly about it, but I, I felt strangely confident in the car. I just was so comfortable. I don't know why, but just so comfortable in it and I was ready. Like I was ready to go further and, you know, coming into, uh, we obviously had planned on doing a fourth pass on Saturday, which we sort of pulled the pin on after having a little bit of a fireball. Um, but just we needed to regroup and, you know, get get prepared again to then tackle the next day strongly. Um, and, yeah, I I felt I felt quietly confident. We just lost Kelly. Oh, you're back. We just back. lost you there for a second. <laughs> the screen just went a bit blank. <laughs> yeah, it was exactly the same. I'm not sure. Are we still on? We, we, I believe we're still on now. It just said we've gone momentarily, and then we looked at me, and now you're back. Yes, absolutely. So, all good. <laughs> might, might have been, might have been just the NHRA guys tapping in to see how good this girl is. <laughs> Hopefully, they do that one day. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you remember where you're up to in your story? Yes. No, I did. Feeling great. Um, as far as the car, the team, like they're just they're awesome group of guys, and you know Phil and the family. Like it's it's hard to not have a whole lot of confidence going into that. Like they're the all the advice I was given, and having confidence in Aaron and the crew and and all the guys. Like every part of it just makes you confident. It's not just um, you know you getting in the car and doing the right thing. So. Uh, you know, I was feeling good going into it, and once I'd had a drive of it, I just was like, "This is where I'm meant to be." <laughs> so you you were like the per, the proverbial child again, again, well, again. I just felt like this is like a lifetime time dream, and I'm here, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> All right. So there were some quotes that um, your mum and dad put up by Phil that you did everything right. Um, all the feedback we've had over the last couple of days from people who have contacted us about what you did, everyone said, you know, you couldn't have done a better job. You did everything exactly as you were asked. Um, yeah, the car had a couple of little issues by the look of things. Um, and so that's the only thing that kept you away from that full licence, which will... Yep. Can, can you talk to us about what the plan is about that? Yeah, like, definitely we... You know, we would have definitely been going for the the complete license. Um, had, there was just, they, you know, ended up with a bit of a couple of gremlins in the engine, which uh, you know, team trying to get their head around a new combination and everything. Because this is the whole, the new car has come with a new combination which they have not worked with before. So it's that everybody's getting their head around, you know, what this one's all about, and there's just. There's something that's happening at the moment, which is a bit where everyone's a bit unsure on, um, and there's no point just going out there and just constantly beating through everything and not, you know, not coming out and being strong with it all. So we, you know, the t the decision was made to just stop there, need, regroup, <laughs> figure, you know, had to do some do their research and and figure out what's happening because, you know, everyone knows that the, the Lamartina family don't do things by halves. They they do it and they do it right and they want to come back and when they do, it's it's going to be on song, you know. And, you know, in turn of all that happening, obviously now the, the team won't be competing at the Winter Nationals and that's, that's not through a driver uh, not being licensed. It's through uh, the team itself is not, you know, there's there's things to be sorted out, and they're not going to do it if they can't do it right. You know, as as a team, so everyone's there, and everybody's um, everyone's keen for it, and everybody had their own little disappointments about not getting there in the end. But 
if we can't do it right, there's no point doing it at all. And we will, in turn, like I'll have more seat time in the car um, because of it, because they'll be testing and then we'll be completing my licensing, you know, while that's happening. And then we'll be hitting Darwin nice. Yeah, we'll be hitting it hard. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I know Nick and I are already booked for Darwin, so we'll be looking forward to the popping by and shake shaking the hand of the, the newest top fuel pilot in the country. Yeah, no, it'll be good. We should hopefully there'll be some um, everything's all ha happening already, you know, to get to get stuff restocked and um, parts and things. So we're looking at you know the next lot of testing and obviously complete my licensing, um, and then from then, yeah, it'll be off to Darwin, nice and strong. Awesome. All right. Well, as I said at the opening, I mean it. There's been a thousand words written already about how you've got here, so we're not going to touch on the excitement of that telephone call. Um, but just congratulations from Nick and I and ADRP. Everybody, I think, is very, very impressed with what you did on the weekend. As you said, the Lamartina family, we know there's only one way they do things. Um, yeah. So pretty nice to know when you're getting strapped into one of those missiles that that's the team that yeah. are putting you down the track. Exactly. And... And that's, that's a huge part in being able to go out there and achieve what we did so, you know, so soon. And, and bit, like I said before, being so comfortable in that car, it's it's everything. It's not just me getting in and feeling like this feels great. So it was it was great. I'm, I'm still a mate. I, I think I exceeded my own expectations, to be honest with you. Like it, um, I sort of, I guess, surprised myself in ways. But I told myself going into it and you know the first run that i was doing in the car there's no mucking around like these cars you don't muck around in them you do what's got to be done and you do it straight away so you just got to get into it if you you know think about it too much or you you know you're sort of going to be a little bit weary here and there but you just got to attack it and you know like phil said to me on the weekend you got to drive the car you don't let the car drive you so did that as good as I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you managed to drive the car and not let it drive you. You certainly did a great job. Um, I think they're fairly wise words, no matter what the race car is, is that you've just got to get in there and do exactly what it needs to be done. And you've done that all through your career. I don't, don't, I don't, think, any, don't oh. think anybody understands what stepping into a fuel car is like until they've stepped into a fuel car. So, um, I can't even explain how fast these things are. They are fast, and you know, I've only, I've only been to you know that bit, bit beyond half track. Or my quickest run of the weekend, I guess, was the five seventy two, and it's like did a five seventy two, and I was off it at half track with a shootout. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yep. <laughs> so what what sort of mile an hour were you crossing half track at, Kel? Uh Two hundred and forty eight mile an hour. That one got to. So you've only got another 50 or 60 to go. Yeah, <laughs> probably more than that, obviously, eventually. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, was, you know, I was very gentle and conservative. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, well, th again, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure we'll catch up with you at the winners. You'll be helping yeah. out the Jet, Jet Family Racing crew. Certainly will be. We'll be racing, Colin's racing in the Eclipse in Factory Extreme and then got also the kids in the junior races. So I'll be around those guys and, yeah, it'll be good. Everyone loves the winters. still fun to be there. I won't be racing, but I'll still be having fun. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. We know that you're a very wanted young lady in this country, <laughs> probably around the world at the moment. So, um Again, thanks to the Lamartina family, you, your, your mum and dad for everything you've done for the sport and we hope that um, we see some very fast times out of you very soon. Be awesome. And I got you there for out of words, Kelly. You, you blacked Come out. Again? You blacked out <laughs> just as you said that. So I, I've taken words out of your mouth. That's, that's unusual. Oh, uh, I Shane Tucker has asked a question. He just, is watching. Just a moment. I'm not allowed to leave. Shane Tucker has popped up with a question, and we all know that yep. no, no one ignores Shane Tucker. <laughs> um, <laughs> the NHRA link. There's ah, there's the, yeah, the, yeah. That was the NHRA link coming in earlier. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that was your prior experience.
Sharon wants to know, with the short wheelbase, will a framer help you here? Sharon wants to know, with the short wheelbase youth and the and the, the comp dragster that you're in, how how much help was that, if any, to getting in this oh, car? It, they helped incredible amounts. Um, I guess, obviously, racing the dragster, you know, Lee, ev everything is familiar to you, like, um, you know, what you got to do in racing, uh, there's you know you where you are on the track and dealing with situations and how you deal with a car that's going slightly wrong and uh wheel spear shake and all that sort of stuff like these are these cars um and it's it's a matter of putting all those series then into into place in something that's just like 10 times quicker or more than that <laughs> um so you know all those all the experiences in those cars help you know like what you've got to do and just applying it to the feelings now in the top fuel car um the ute's been obviously great you got to be very quick in that thing like it's it can turn to to no good in a matter of the split seconds with anything but you know that thing especially with the short wheelbase and you've got to be onto it when something's you know not going not quite so well so i guess in the the learning of driving that thing and um you know, be trying to be as response, responsive as I can to what the car's doing. It's taught me how to do that for this as well. So there's yeah, okay. there's a lot in it. Now with the, you mentioned yeah. the Ute steering U. You mentioned the Ute so short and it turns so quickly. Um, you, you obviously have to be very responsive, and everyone talks about with door slammer type cars, you tend to manhandle them. Is, is the finessing of feeling it moving and then bringing it back different in such a long and fast car? Oh, definitely. Like um, if you sort of see in cars of the, the ute, you, there's quite a lot of steering that does end up happening. Um, and, you know, in a way you've still got to finesse that, but sometimes they can be so jittery in their movements that you've got to make a sudden movement. But you don't do that in the top fuel car, you know. Like you, you are just finessing the wheel to where you want it to be and, if you made a sudden movement in that thing, then you, know, you just don't. So, yeah, it's it's just to two totally different driving styles. But being that I had driven a dragster before, uh, you have the understanding of not that it's anywhere near as quick as a top fuel car, but you do have the understanding of the, the steering behind a, a dragster compared to a short wheelbase car. They, and I just, I don't know, it's like you get into the ute and that's that driving style. You get into the dragster, it's that driving style. It's, yeah. You do, and you just, as a driver, you just feel what the car wants and you do what it, you know, you work with it. And then you get into a 300 mile an hour top fuel dragster and you get the feeling of what it wants. <laughs> it's a... Oh, we've lost, we've lost a bit of bandwidth there with you again. All right, well, I'll take an opportunity to say thank you twice again um, and wrap up, get out of your way, let you get back to your family, those, back to those gold Christmas trees in the background there. And I'm sure you're tugging a few of them and uh, waiting waiting for one that says top fuel on the bottom of it, which I'm sure won't be far away. I, yeah, that's what the whole thing is what dreams are made of, but if to one day have a Christmas tree that's got winter and top fuel would just be out of this world. Cool. All right, mate, I'll get out of your way and we will talk at the winners. Thank you so much again for your time. Congratulations and we look forward to... It's been things. an incredible, incredible amount of support from just everybody on Facebooks and messages I'm getting. It's truly, it's blowing me away. And I, for everyone out there, thank you. And thank you for your interest in it all. And, yeah, I, it's, thank you. You know, thanks to everyone out there. It's unreal. It's it's really unreal. Awesome, Cal. You deserve it. Thanks so much, and we'll talk soon. Bye. There you go, guys. Kelly Betts uh, still on cloud 99, I think, not nine. Uh, and no one could blame her for that. It's an amazing opportunity that the Lamartina family have given a young Australian racer. And we can't wait to see Kel tearing it up at a track very, very soon. If it's... Uh, those in Sydney, I'm sure there will be another some, as she said, testing and licensing. Uh, but for us, it'll be we'll see her at Darwin at Nitro up north in July. 
Uh, I think everyone will want to get up there and watch that. That's us for the day, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're really grateful to Kelly for popping on. And we'll talk to you soon. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah.